Supercars are typically very fast, they are very exotic, and they're also very expensive. But what if we made a supercar that wasn't any of these things? What if we made a K-car supercar? If you guys don't know what K-cars are, they're very small Japanese cars uh, produced from the 1940s to modern times. They're still quite popular in Japan. They're most known for being very small and having only 63 horsepower. So what if we turned a K-car sports car, uh, something like the AutoZam AZ1, the Suzuki Cappuccino, or the Honda Beat into a supercar with 63 horsepower still and fitting all the other k-car rules no guys really the goal is to beat the likes of ferrari and lamborghini with only 63 horsepower what's up guys my name is rai and welcome to some more automation and of course bmng drive we are building the greatest k-car of all time full stop it is going to be a mid-engine rear-wheel drive v12 k-car i know that sounds insane and it's probably because it is insane. I don't know why anyone would stick a 660cc V12 into a tiny little rear-wheel drive sports car. So today's goal is building a K car that fits K car rules. It's going to have 64 horsepower or less. It's going to fit all the size constraints and it's going to be quite cheap as well. But it's also going to be a, a supercar. It's not going to be the fastest supercar of all time. It's not going to be the fastest sports car of all time, but it's going to be probably one of the quickest K cars of all time. Definitely quicker than all three cars as I mentioned. So the first thing we need to do is choose the body and I, I thought nothing better than a supercar-esque body. Okay, so we're gonna click this body right here. I'm not exactly sure what it's based off. I know it's based off of a real life car, so let me know in the comments down below if you guys know what it's based off of. We're going to choose the little gullwing door model because it's so adorable and I think this will be perfect for a V12 supercar. Panel material. Fiberglass. We're not going crazy. It's still gonna be quite expensive, but it's not gonna be like as expensive as even a normal car. I'm actually pricing this thing to cost around the same as maybe like a Toyota Camry, something like that, maybe $30,000, $40,000 range in modern money. So it's going to be a pretty cheap supercar and actually a pretty cheap sports car, actually. It's going to be a monocoque chassis with, I think, glued aluminum chassis material. So the chassis structure itself is glued aluminum, which is used in like sports cars like Lotuses, etc. So it's not crazy in the 1990s. Maybe this might be a little excessive, but this is a supercar after all. It's going to be a mid-mounted longitudinal engine. It's going to be push rod front and rear. So basically the goals of this car are to handle exceptionally well, to be exceptionally light and to sound exceptionally good. We're going to make a new engine. We're going to call this the, um, the, the V12K Sport Extravaganza. I don't know. I don't think that's spelled right, but it's okay. Very name. R. Engine block, obviously it's going to be a V12, 60 degree angle, it's going to be all aluminum with four valves per cylinder. I actually probably could go push rod because we would save like a considerable amount of weight. One thing you'll probably notice is the engine's actually too large, it's actually 942 cc's, whereas K cars are strictly 660 cc's or smaller. Well if we go to the next tab here, we can actually make the capacity a little smaller. So now it's 660 cc's, perfect, see, exactly pretty decent internal structure um it's gonna be an expensive engine let's be honest guys the engine is gonna be quite expensive definitely the worst horsepower per dollar engine ever made and let's just yoink this red line up just a little higher it's gonna be a 10,000 rpm v12 yeah it's gonna sound good and they actually recently i mean i say recently it was like a, like a month back they updated the v12 engine sounds so it sounds absolutely godly we'll hear that in just a second it's going to be naturally aspirated though go for a single point electronic fuel injection and a little bigger manifold maybe 60 and race intake let's keep this all the same let's go for the same size exhaust let's go for a catalytic converter and just one straight through muffler so right off the bat here it makes 56 horsepower which is pretty gosh darn good we could probably increase the red line actually further which would be amazing let's go maybe 10,500 rpm we change the header just a little bit here, so we're making a little too much horsepower, so we'll go ahead and just like, I don't know, strangle it just a little bit, maybe? Okay, actually, it needs strangling. All right, so we increase the red line now to 11,000. We tweak the cam profile, the lifters, and the exhaust size just a bit. So now it makes 64 horsepower and 37 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty, it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's got no torque at all, but it's got horsepower, which is really all that matters. 
and it revs to a glorious 11,000 RPM, which is absolutely insane for an engine such as this. About a month ago, they actually updated the V12 sounds, so it sounds way different and so, so, so much crazier. Let's just take a listen and hear what the V12 K-Sport extravaganza sounds like. Idle? Sounds pretty fine, right? It idles at a brisk, what, like 2,000 RPM almost, what, 15, 1600, which is, you know, actually kind of high. And if we just rev it up. Normal. A little aggressive. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I think that sounds pretty insane. It sounds like a race car, which is the goal of the build. Now we're gonna go ahead and could choose the body, which I think we wanted the this one. So there's this one, which is normal doors, but I want gull wing doors because this is a supercar. I kind of want this one, but it just looks too absolutely insane to be realistic at all. So we're going to go for the, the Gullwing one. It's going to be an automated single clutch manual gearbox. So it's going to be a like a sequential gearbox. Um, it's not going to be a true manual because this is a, it's a supercar, guys, and it's going to have some supercar abilities. And we need just that quicker acceleration. It's going to be maybe a geared LSD, though. We're going to give it some semi slicks. We're going to give it, I think, pretty wide ones that maybe like two, 255 and maybe 195. Now, the fitment looks pretty bad, but we'll fix that later on. Uh, we're going to go for like one pistons front and rear, I'm thinking, honestly, because we actually don't really need much brakes. No entertainment, because this is a supercar after all. It's a 90 supercar, so entertainment is an optional extra. Manual rack and pinion steering. We're gonna go for just ABS probably. Maybe like basic 80 safety. It costs $35,000. It weighs 1,050 pounds. It does zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.9 nice seconds, which is I think pretty good for a sports car of this era. Obviously, it's not really a true supercar performance-wise, but it's a true super K car. We're gonna change the ride height and stuff now by going to the fixtures tab, and going to this gear. No, that's not what I wanted. Go to the wheels here and offset them just a little bit. By that, I mean a lot. So it's nice and flush. This is a supercar, so it's gonna be quite flush. Uh, not many cars really are in the 90s, but this is going to be a flush car. I quickly just want to show you guys how well this car would sell. So if we look down here, if it was marketed as a supercar, we would sell exactly zero. If we sold the car for like $3, $3,000, we would sell three. So fun fact, guys. Also, if we sold the car as an off-road budget vehicle and sold it for $3,000, we would sell also three. So uh, we would make a more successful off-road budget car with this than a track car or a sports car yeah it's not it's it's fine it's fine guys it's fine you know what it's fine and the name is gonna be the fashion gts because nothing says fashion like the fashion i don't know why that's the name but it is so what we're going to do now is design the car in a time lapse i'm going to go over all my design tips and tricks and then we'll hop into beatman g drive and see how it drives. So sit back, relax, guys, and enjoy. So we're starting the time lapse for my K car supercar. And I'm learning this body is atrocious in every way. The proportions are just so off of any realistic car. I want to go for these sort of uh, circular headlights. I'm not too sure how I want to do it, though. I kind of want pop ups, but I kind of don't. So I play around with these sort of rectangle headlights with some pop ups above it. So it has even more rectangles. Um, and I do this whole thing and it looks just kind of depressing and like a catfish, but it's there for now I do change it later on. I add these simple turn signals on the side here Make sure they actually properly work make sure the headlights properly work add some glass over the headlight covers Basically a bit of a hood scoop which I change uh, to some little scoops on the edge of the headlights Which look actually pretty cool. I actually like how that looks Just playing around with a front splitter now onto the rear end I want to actually have a big wing in this car at first But I do change around later on because it just doesn't look quite right So I, I, I morph the back end and add a simpler wing on the back going to the back end now add these quite simple tail lights which look kind of you know if they fit the car nicely they're kind of fun adding a very simple diffuser with i think dual exhaust is what i'm going to do so just dual center exhaust tuning it for about 63 horsepower or so adding these sort of upright dual exhaust that sort of stick up a little bit as well and a rear grill 
and then adding some side trim, which I do delete, and then going back, adding some rear trim, and now changing the headlights just a little bit more because they still don't really suit my fancy here, and I will just tune them and change them after, adding one single wiper, uh, playing around with some mirrors, a door handle at the bottom of the gullwing doors, a rear intake, a side skirt, changing the tires to these sort of unilug, uh, really weird like monoblock kind of, kind of wheels, adding some badging to the front and back, adding a emblem to the middle front of the car, and in front of us is the 1997 Altris Fashion GTS. First off, I just want to say this car is absolutely tiny. It's literally lower than the barriers. It's literally as low or lower than the barriers. Absolutely insane. I also want to point out I modified the front end looks just a little bit um, because I didn't like how it looked quite exactly, so I changed it a bit. Um, I also edited the car in J-Beam, so what I did was make it so it revved a bit faster which I think fits the car's vibe a lot more because this car's vibe is about experience. It's not about performance. Although you guys will soon realize that this car actually has some serious performance credentials, okay? This is a 1997 sports car, supercar, right? Some competitors would be things like maybe the Chevy Corvette ZR1, which had, I think, 400 horsepower. It did 0 to 60 in about 4.9 seconds. Also, the Lamborghini Diablo, which is about 4 seconds to 60, which is obviously insane, and so on and so on. Those cars are 4 or 5 seconds 0 to 60, which is kind of out of this car's league, but it's not not at all okay we're gonna start this car up now uh so the car doesn't like to start anymore it's probably because i edited the j-beam just a bit it's okay it's fine it's 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 definitely this is fine guys it's a supercar i didn't say it was super reliable it's a supercar but i do promise it has supercar performance in like almost every way actually so you know how i mentioned that those cars were on the four to five second mark for zero to sixty well, this car is literally about that itself. This car is quite stiff suspension, and uh, it is quite rear biased weight wise. And you'll see in a second why this car is so insane. We're launching here. It's just rev the piss out of it. And it pulls a wheelie. Did you guys see that? It we're doing that again. It pulls a wheelie. Dodge Demon, eat your heart out because this thing did it first, okay? So 4.46 seconds to 62 miles an hour, which is 100 kilometers an hour. Absolutely insane. It's definitely slowing down after that, though. But still, a 13.2 and a quarter mile is very, very fast for the 1990s. Absolutely insane. I actually had no idea it was this quick. Um, we're going to hop into a track test and actually drive this thing on a track. It's actually insanely agile as well. It's kind of sketchy, but you guys will see in just a sec. Now we're at the Automation Test Track Handling Circuit, which is like my favorite test track of all time. This car is going to handle very, very good, hopefully at least. I haven't actually driven it on this track once, I promise you guys. But I also promise it should do pretty well. I did a few driving in other tracks just to see how it drove. Um, and it's basically a go-kart. It weighs just over 1,000 pounds with 63 horsepower. But it's more than enough to have fun with, okay? I think this car will do great on this track. We're going to hop here, take off traction control, at least partially. Hop into first person. Now, I've got zero seat time on this course, guys. Okay, I'm a little rusty here, clearly. Oh, it's shaking. It's shaking, okay. Okay, wow, that back is a little, that back is a little scary. Be careful on the braking. The weight transfer is real. It feels so fast. It's not actually going that fast, but it feels fast. Maybe it actually is fast. I can't tell yet. It's so bland and it's actually insane. Now the straight line here, it's a little slower. Ooh, a little sketch in the dirt there, gotta be careful. So I'm sure I can do way better than that. 116, is that good? I don't know. Okay, that's my that's pretty much my best time ever. 
I know we can shatter this record. I know we can shatter the record. Um, the last the last record was 2021 with a like a very heavy supercar. Honestly, I'm gonna try one more time and I'll just sort of skip to the, the best bit of that because I, I wanna see, can we do better? All right, try number two. My seating position's now changed. My sleeves are rolled up. We're gonna get a good launch this time. My lines are pretty bad. I honestly don't really have much seat time in BBG Racing lately. Kind of messed that corner up. We're okay. We're good. Stay in third. Power through. I'm tempted to title this video Best Handling Car Ever. Because it is. Like, this is probably the, the ultimate handling course, in my opinion. It's a great combination of handling with a tiny bit of acceleration right here. We broke a little early. We could have accelerated a little bit more. It is so planted. It doesn't have much power, so there's like very little wheel spin. The tires are quite meaty for this power mount. Come on. There we go. 115. New record. Which is actually pretty nuts. I, I'm sure we can break like 110 in this thing, I think. Um, if we really, really do good. I think it's like a 110 car absolutely insane we'll hop into the jump arena see how it jumps all right so we're at the jump arena i accidentally spawned my car next to the the widget and i just want to see look how tiny it is look how absolutely tiny this car is compared to the widget we're gonna back up here oh let's back up don't scratch it don't scratch it come on oh we're good it's about the same size as the widget, at least width-wise, right? And a lot lower height-wise, uh, but nothing else, really. So if we just go ahead and just move the widget out of the way here. No, that's not... Just do that. Over 100 miles an hour, pretty quick. We are pretty much at the top of our speed now. Yeah, not really good top speed, but... Stuck the landing at the beginning, at least. We actually stuck the landing? Oh! Oh, we made it. We're good, we're good, we're good. Pump the brakes. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. We survived. I actually didn't think- I, I've actually never survived like this well. I mean, I think we're missing- okay, we're missing one tire, but honestly? Not bad. Not bad, guys. I haven't made a K car uh, in, in quite a long time, so I'm happy I got to make this. I'll leave a link if you guys want to download it. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Shit. Shit. Uh, uh, it's fine.